thanks for staying with us. So on Wednesdays, we always talk about our business strategy and entrepreneurship. And joining us on the show is a serial entrepreneur, author, and leading internet market consultant in Nigeria. His name is Gutsan Okoro Dudu. He'll be discussing how to be a successful marketer. In other words, how to sell ice cubes to Eskimos. <laughs> and making money with little or no financial investment. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. You can call us on 081-270-53687-091-390-76948. You can also tweet us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. So everybody wants to be rich. Everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Everybody wants to make money. We all want to be like you. Tell us a bit about yourself, what you do, and why you think um, entrepreneurship is the right thing to do. OK, thank you. Um, first of all, I should say that um, entrepreneurship is for everyone. We are all entrepreneurs, one way or the other. And if you check leading companies all around the world, they want to hire people who are entrepreneurs, you who have that mindset, who want to make something happen. Most employees have this um, attitude that, uh, you know, I just do my work, and at the end of the month, I and something but an entrepreneur is thinking about how to create value how to put things out there how to make things work how to solve problems and that's what um, everyone should be that's the attitude everyone should have so becoming an entrepreneur is beyond just making money it's about the mindset and i observe that in the nigerian space most people don't really like um, um, motivational speakers because they feel uh, what do i need motivation for but every change that happens in life begins from little mindset shifts. Because by the time you become rich, by the time you become a real millionaire, you will discover that a lot of things have changed about you. You're not the same person you were before. You are someone entirely new. You, your attitudes have changed, the, the people you spend time with, the things you spend your time doing, everything about you changes. And that's really what we should become. And every growing economy in the world, all over the world, is built on the back of the private sector. And if we begin to have and encourage more people to become entrepreneurs, we are ultimately going to have a blooming economy at the end of the day. So the hardship everybody as an entrepreneur have is you know, how to sell what they sell. So if I would say I only go into businesses that sell themselves. So if I don't sell food, what else? You know, but how would you sell, like the example given, ice cube to someone who already lives within ice. Uh, the, the, How do you convince people that, you know, except, you, and, and, you know, I want a straight line. When you're not a con man, how do you sell ice cubes to an Eskimo? Okay, good. Mm -hmm. The first problem is trying to sell ice cubes to an Eskimo because he already has ice. As a business person, your job is to solve problems. So if you're giving someone something he already has and you're trying to shove it down his throat, you're doing the wrong thing. You're in the wrong business. You're not going to succeed. Business is not just about selling and making money. It's about mm -hmm. creating value. It's about adding something that was missing. So if we're trying to sell ice cubes, I think that will not be the appropriate question. It will be, how do we sell ice cubes to people on the other side that are experiencing a lot of heat, right? And it will be just to demonstrate. Demonstration is the best way to sell because I show you this solves your problem. You take it. You don't mm -hmm. need uh, much persuasion. You don't need to use a lot of gimmicks because the person is already sold. All you need to do is to show it to the person that this solves your problem and, and that's all. Recently, I heard someone say that there's a difference between a trader and an entrepreneur, that many Nigerians are just trading. You buy, you sell, and you call yourself an entrepreneur. Is there really a difference? Uh, yes and no. So um, the start of every entrepreneurial journey is what we'll call um, a solopreneur, someone who is just starting out. At that point, you may not have the capital and the wherewithal to um, hire employees and get your business running without your direct involvement. You know, but over time, you are able to grow your business. The, the problem, I think, is where people limit themselves and they assume that as long as I'm getting stuff and I'm selling what you refer to as a trader, I should just end there. They don't see beyond. They never think that um, there's something more. I should hire people, which is the goal of being an entrepreneur at the end of the day. Because by the time you're solving people's problem, you need more hands to help you solve the problem. And that's what we begin to see dropping unemployment rates all over the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, you were saying you, you can't sell ice to an Eskimo. But there are actually some people that can sell that ice to an Eskimo, can convince that Eskimo that to uh, buy more I, ice. <laughs> in fact, I need that ice. Because if you, if you market well, if you market properly, it becomes um, enticing. Like 
sometimes I'm on Instagram and I see these adverts. There are some adverts and like, hey, I don't even really need the thing. I'm saying, hey, I wish I could buy this thing. And like, I don't even really need like it. It's like selling Indian hair to Indians. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You see let, me, let, me, let, me, let me come to you as an entrepreneur because people are watching me. We've seen a lot of speakers. People, what I find is that a lot of people attend all these classes, all these coaches, they get all these terms, they read books, they come out, look good on TV, you know, and they just have a lot to say based on what they've read. But people learn more from entrepreneurs who are actually entrepreneurs, who have actually done something. So tell us again about just so let, let, let's sell you, let us know who you are, what have you done? Because how do I believe you can make me a millionaire if you haven't made any millions? Okay, great. That's a great question. So I've been in the trenches since um, the early 2000s. I began my journey in 2008, to be precise. And I started a website design agency back then. I had about 15 staff. I had uh, three who were developers and I had um, the rest were marketers. And I struggled through that business because I didn't understand the fundamentals of value. Mm -hmm. I, what I wanted was to make money. And that's the first problem. The fundamentals of every business is value creation. So we try to sell website services to people who really didn't need website services. We try to sell to people just around businesses around, everyone should be online. But my mindset changed a couple of years later where I realized that a business website should be providing value to the person. And then I restructured the whole business. We're a bit lean at this time. And I put out my marketing out there, and the result was outstanding. That was the big break in my life. That was what changed everything. So I see um, entrepreneurship as a mindset thing. It must be to create value. People watching us today from anywhere they're watching, they're watching because of the value they hope to get from the station. They wouldn't just tune in if there was nothing to be benefited. So that's the whole ball game. Uh, if you say you want to sell ice on Eskimo, good luck trying, because they already have excess of it. They don't need more. What they need more are things like heaters, right? So if I were a businessman and you were a business person and you're selling ice and I'm selling heaters, I would, I'll sell you, I'll, I'll perform you any day. So it's just, it's just easy, it's just simple. What, the, the, what if I have the right strategy? With the right, the right strategy won't even work because... So in comparison, you will always be on the losing end. You will always be on saying. the losing end because the person doesn't just need it. Business is about meeting needs, solving problems. People pay because they want to have problems solved. I'll give an example. Nobody buys Coke because he wants to drink Coke. They buy Coke because they want the transformation that comes from drinking Coke. Oh, I'm testy, I'm you know, heated up, and when I take a bottle of Coke, I feel refreshed, I feel you know, at ease. That's why people take Coke. So there's no business that will sell without presenting the transformation. In fact, that's what people buy. People buy transformation. They don't buy products and services. You're not buying your phone because you want to have a phone. You're buying your phone because of the transformation you hope to get when you begin to use that phone. So that's what business is about um, in summary. Mm. In fact, that's what good marketing is. Good marketing is communicating the shift from the before state to the after state. Mm. What were you before you started using my product and what will you become after you use my product. That's what good marketing is. Okay, so some people still have good products that are problem solving mm. and they can't even seem to get the value for it. So I'll make an example. You can't get the market or the No, they even even if oh, they can't even find the market one. Number two, they can't even get proper value. So Miriam is good at marketing and I'm terrible at it. And we're both selling mugs. She's making she's cashing out. I mean I'm putting my mugs here every day. And I decide okay, to be Miriam's competition is to further drop my prices. You know? I'm dropping, so I'm making sales, no profit. But Mayam is making profit. Okay, that's what the problem. People get into pricing wars, and it's unnecessary. The, the fact is that if you can demonstrate your value, every business should have an advantage. Every business should have a reason why people should do business with you. Now, if you can properly demonstrate that value, people will buy from you. And if you observe, Miriam is likely doing something you are not doing. Mm -hmm. And the right approach for you is to look at what Miriam is doing and model what she's doing. And eventually you would yeah, master to get mm -hmm. you, will, you have to be a copycat at times. Mm. There's nothing wrong with being a copycat. Look at uh, the Japanese market. When they started producing cars, Toyota, for example, they decided to copy other products. They decided to copy cars in the US. Look at Kia and Hyundai, they decide to copy Toyota. So mm -hmm. there's nothing shameful. You should shamelessly copy the strategies that Miriam is using. That's the best way to Moving sell. To house. <laughs> but talking about real life Miriam, now I have books that I want to sell. And I noticed that Nigerians don't really buy as much as those who live abroad. 
I have books I want to sell. I have talked about it. It's, it tells a fantastic message. You know, it sends out people who get it are happy about it, but I'm still not getting the sales I want from my Nigerians. What am I doing wrong? Okay, the first <laughs> problem is that you have the mindset that Nigerians don't buy books. No. And Nigerians, as a matter of fact, do buy books. I spend a lot of money buying books. I spend a lot of money taking programs, sometimes in millions, because people love information. Mm -hmm. And I sell books and I sell trainings. So I'm very aware that people buy, spend a lot of money buying products. The, the problem is just, first of all, that mindset. And secondly, well, you're not you using the right sense. approach. Okay, you, right would, you would need, first of all, to interact with a business consultant or a marketing consultant. I can't which, afford one. Uh, you could read online. You know, this, if you cannot afford one, you can always read online. There are strategies online. There are, there's a lot of info, free information online on YouTube and different websites where you can you know, learn what people are doing and see how you can. I, I will just leave you with this tip. First of all, you need to understand what problem your book solves. If you can understand what problem your book solves, the next question will be, who does it solve it for? Right? So my, my book solves this problem. It solves it for this category of persons. And then you present that problem and the solution to those people and your books will sell. So if you just try this little tip, you see you have a... Uh, it's general. So it's not general yes. order in Ibu. Yeah. It's not a general in Ibu market where anybody that needs it to come, they don't need it to come. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Let's are... go on a break, YK. Okay. When we come back, we continue with our conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing with our entrepreneur, Mr. Gutson Okoro Dudu. Yes. Um, I just heard you when you talked about, um, you know, having, creating a website and then trying to sell the website. I, I can figure out this is something you do when you have a laptop or you have a phone. We have phones today that are like, you know, computers. I advise a young person listening, you know, sitting and thinking I can sell anything, but I cannot, I don't want to leave this place. Can they actually just be... Uh, sedentary like you know, most of our young ones are and still be able to market something or must they go out this multi-level marketing thing and try to convince people who don't need some herbs to buy them in the name of okay so um i told you the story about the whole website thing and i told you there was a shift in my mindset and everything changed now i decided to start promoting the service online because i realized that in my immediate environment i couldn't reach the type of people who my solution solved their problems, okay? So I started promoting my service online and I got clients from Abuja, Port Harcourt and different places that were so different from where I was living at that time in Delta State. So there's, if someone has the access to a computer, the internet, he can live the life of his dreams right from his bedroom, oh, if he knows how. How? how? So he has oh. to learn that... Of course, there are resources that will help um, such a person. For example, um, I have a book that will be given to anyone who watches um, this show live today. Um, okay. If you visit godsinokorududu.com forward slash TVC, you can sign up and get my free book, Online Business for Starters. It will show them the exact steps that they need to start a, an internet business from as little as a month. Mm. So there are different strategies, different things I talk about in that book that will, will help mm. them. Yeah. You have to be very careful because, you know, a lot of young people is yahoo yahoo. They use computer mm -hmm. for. So when you're saying how to start up a business, how are you going to differentiate between the yahoo yahoo and the <laughs> legitimate <laughs> online business? Because from a layman's point of view, for instance, me, I look at all computer business as yahoo yahoo now. Because, <laughs> well, not me, not me in particular, but all no, policemen, yes. all policemen, <laughs> if you have a computer, you're a yeah, yahoo, yahoo. Yeah, yahoo. <laughs> can't be a programmer. All right, so, okay. I mean, I mean, I know one of your strengths is um, marketing consulting, how okay. to market products. And I think that's why, Mary, we asked you earlier about marketing. Many people are entrepreneurs out there, but they're having serious difficulty in connecting to their target market. So how... How do you help with strategy? How, based on the, of course, I know it's based on the product, but what are the general things you can do to help market a product to? What are those things you must look at to market your product to your consumers? Okay, the first uh, thing that we do uh, when we want to market products 
is or when we work with businesses, yeah. we work backwards. So we go to a market. We decide who the market is first. Okay. And then we ask ourselves, what are the obvious problems that this market is experiencing that has no obvious solution? Right? And then we help those businesses develop solutions through that problem. And then it becomes easy to sell the product. So there's something we call the customer avatar. With the customer avatar, we're able to specify who someone is, who the target market for a product is, and we're able to specify what their problems are. We're able to describe their lives and the kind of things they go through. We're, we're actually able to plan the before and the after. So we say, okay, what does this person have before that he will have, or that he would not have when he uses my product? Or what does this person not have that he will have after using my product? I'll use the money-making example that she mentioned. If my product teaches people how to make money online, for example, the, what the person has uh, at first is that he doesn't have money, I mean, under the half column. And then after using my product, he would have money. If we go to feel, which is the very next step, how does this person feel before using my product? Right? The person feels timid, he feels hopeless, but after using my product, he feels um, energized, he feels motivated, he, feel, he believes that he can make something happen for himself. So by the time you really go granular into identifying what your prospects are, who your prospects are and the pains they go through, you'll be able to, at the end of that exercise, automatically you would have powerful selling points for any product anywhere in the world. Mm, interesting. You know, the, I mean, the latest product on this table is... Uh, yeah, the books we have with yeah. ML. So yeah. maybe you can, you can help us with some strategy. <laughs> it would be great because she wants every child in Nigeria to understand that um, these, uh, uh, to be very environmentally aware yes. and know that vultures, owls are not demons, you know. So she's writing a book to teach and educate mm. not just children, but families, you mm -hmm. know. So that's the solution. We're trying to educate Nigerians. But we now put it through. So I guess after the show, we'll talk about strategy, but you can, you can give us a few tips. Okay, so the first thing I, would, I understand from what she's selling is that it's, it doesn't solve a problem for an individual per mm. se. It does when you look at the whole picture, but on an individual basis, it doesn't. It solves a problem for one, government, two, um, the schools. environment. Uh, yeah, schools, for example. So when w such a product is, is to be targeted at people who are in those positions, who can say, okay, just a policy. We want all schools reading this book. You know, we want, so that's the way to get the market adoption. It, you would not get it by trying to sell to every one single one. family one after the other. Yeah. You would target NGOs, you target non-governmental organizations, mm -hmm. you target um, schools. bodies that are interested yeah. in the environment. And that's, those, are the, those are your buyers, actually, oh, who can just come buyers. and say, we want to distribute one million copies for free. Yeah. So that's the, the, the strategy you should be looking at instead of trying to force people to buy one yeah. after Thank the other. Thank you very other. much, yeah. Mr. Yes. <laughs> Any other questions for him on social media? Thank you very much. We learned quite a few things from you this morning. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. It was my pleasure. That is all we can take on the show today. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.